Hey folks, Levi here once again. Sorry you guys haven't seen me in a while. I know it's been, what, maybe a week or two weeks or something like that. Hope you enjoyed my this Pickles 42 video, right? I think I did that. Should be on my channel. Sorry guys, I haven't done a video in a while. I've just been busy with work. You know, just been busy lately. And, uh, but anyway, continuing my Superman marathon today. If you don't know, I've been on Smallville. And today I'm actually finishing Smallville here. So this video will be my thoughts slash favorite episodes of Smallville season 10. Uh, the final, or I can just say in the video, the final season of Smallville. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Which, of course, is the final season of the show where Clark becomes Superman. I'll show you some of the artwork here. A booklet, which is, contains the episodes, and yep, the Superman suit. Clark, and then Lois's wedding. That was Clark, and here was Lois as they were preparing to get married to at the final season, the final episode. So, and. So what did I think of Smallville though, the final season? I really enjoyed this show, enjoyed this, the final season of Smallville. I've enjoyed Smallville all the way through. To me, it's a really good show. It's a good coming of age story. I think the cast is excellent. Tom Mulling, I think, does a great job. I do have issues with this season, but some of this season, uh, we do get some cast members back. Let me get to it. Uh, like. Pretty much you have the regular cast coming back. You have Callum Blue, uh, who plays out in season 9, coming back. Let's see. We do have Willing did Ace Press Sisters in having the cast coming back, especially for, for Michael Rosenbaum to come back. He, We had Antonio Tull come back this season. You have Antonio Tull, you have John Schneider, Michael Rosenbaum comes back at the end, at the final. As Lex Luthor, Christian Croak, I don't think she came back, but came, some of them probably, but for willing, Rosenbaum was the only person he could have Super Chan Lex Luthor in the series. And I do like it though when Tom Willing says in the interview, you know, there is no Superman without Lex. So of course they had to bring Lex back in here. And of course Lionel coming back. And I'll get more into the story as we get into it. Uh, Laura. Vandor, she comes back as as Kara. The producers brought her and back as Lionel. Uh, I'll explain a little more in details about that. But everyone in the cast is here, and you see final. It's just basically a good ending for the show. You know, of course, becoming Superman. That's what the season is pretty much building up to. But anyway, what Smallville season ten is about is in the final se se season of the series. Season 10 continues the romance first developed between Clark and Lois and Lois Lane in Season 9, as well as the continuation of Clark's trials and forging of a superhero identity known as Superman. Also, you have uh, Lex Luthor coming back. Like I said, the end well, Lex Luthor is making clone versions of, him, of himself, you know, so he can live again after the incident and the Arctic episode when when the fortress came, you know, smashing down on him. He's basically... Lex has been cloning him, so way more than that. And also, you have an Earth 2 in this series, where you have an Earth 2 of John Glover, of Lionel Luther. I would say more of an evil version of Lionel Luther than he was before. And you also have Ultraman, aka Clark Luther, which I'll get into that. And of course, uh, the series ends, you know, with some of the heroes dealing with some stuff, but not trusting Chloe, because you know, that was a Mac much in this season. Uh, but you, you also have Darkseid coming to the show, granted goodness. You have the character Darkseid who is coming to Smallville, basically coming to the world to rule it, and Clark, of course, must gain his powers and eventually become Superman to defeat him. So, pretty much that's what Smallville Season 10 is. So, yeah. I'll go ahead and talk about my favorite episodes, but before I get to the last one, I want to talk about my okay episodes when I get there. You know what I mean when I get there, but anyway, the four minutes in, I'm sorry. We'll go ahead and just get started. Alright. Starting with my favorite episodes of Smallville. Starting with the first episode called 
Lazarus, yes, Lazarus. This is where, in the beginning, after Clark, you know, ascended, I think he always, and after fighting with Zod, after, you know, when Zod scattered the mind, scattered the blue kryptonite, we see Clark, you know, fall to the ground, and he's pretty much dying, and Lois doesn't know what to do, so she's, Lois is, you know, she found out when Clark kissed her, or when the boy kissed her, that her, him and Clark, her and the, him and the boy were the same person. Uh, Lois does remove the kryptonite. Clark pretty much, you know, is, he's like pretty much dead. He's in the cornfield. He like even sees, he's like, Jarrell, what am I doing here? He's like, you know, and he's like, well, Kilo, you're, you're pretty much dead. You know, he's like, he sees like his own graveyard, so I'm saying, he's like, Kilo, you didn't trust the humans, you didn't trust anybody help you made this mistake. And because of that mistake, this happens like, let me go back, Joel. I can take care of them. But when Lois pulls the kryptonite out of him, Lois doesn't tell Clark, but Lois sees Clark heal up, his chest heal up, and him uses super speed, and she smiles, you know. Yeah. And you find out Oliver at the end of the season, he's kidnapped by Mark. I mean, kidnapped by, <laughs> kidnapped by, Mark. kidnapped by, I know it was a big flag who was part of the Suicide Squad, starts beating him up, trying to find out about the superheroes and their identities, and all, you know, is beating pretty much Oliver to a pulp, tied him up, and Chloe uses Dr. Faith's helmet to see her future, and she later swaps herself for Oliver's return from, so basically she swaps herself, she puts on the Dr. Faith helmet, you know, after Clark is healing up, after Dr. Mills healing him up, uh, then after, well, Tess ends up waking up in Camus Labs, and her face was halfway burned, but she's held up. Pretty much, you know, because, well, I'll get to that later, but she's pretty much held up, and she sees a young boy, Alexander, and you see all these clones that Alexis made, and the clone boy, Alexander, the clone, says, we're just trying to heal the greater, of course, Lex himself. And then you have Lex 13, uh, played by Maxine Gravin, who I think played in, I think, season 5 or 6 of this show, I think. I'm sorry, season 5. But he also plays an older man, a older version of Lex Luthor. And this Lex 13 is completely evil. He attacks. Um, Tess nearly knocks her out. Uh, and he prepares a plan. He puts on, he dresses nice and stuff like Lex would. And he kidnaps Lois. And, uh, you know, ties her up in a cornfield and tells her, you know what, this is the first time I've ever saved Clark. And he betrayed my friendship. And then Lois realized, well, Lex? And when Clark does show up as the boy, he's like, he's like, Clark, we're all friends. And I'm like, you, you know, you have darkness in your heart just as much as I do. No, Clark, I give you a choice. He pretty much says that he, he sets the cornfield on fire. There's gasoline in the cornfield. I'm going to kill Lois. Or... The Daily Planet Globe is going to blow up and it's going to kill a bunch of people. Now, you can't save both. So you got to make a choice. You're not fast enough to get both as he's testing them. And Clark gets mad and starts chopping the old Olex. Nearly almost kills him. But the clone dies anyway, pretty much. Because he, you know, his, his, he ages really fast. Uh, Clark is able to use super speed. And as the water, he is able to save, you know, the catch the Daily Globe and he flies up there for a minute. We see him fly. It's very nice. And then, of course, he saves Lois. You know, runs through the fire as he can and I think either uses a super breath or runs it out, I forget. But either way, it was a good episode when, you know, he's been going through these trials with, Le I mean, with, uh, trials with Jarrell. He's like, Jarrell, I'm ready. He's like, Jarrell says, Kella, you did tell me you are ready? You almost took a man's life. You made a mistake. You almost killed somebody. You can't do that. He's like, there's too much darkness within you, Kilo. I said, if you do that, if you let that darkness come into you, as what Joe's telling him, that darkness in your heart, you can be, become Earth's greatest threat. You can be a great threat. You know, like, for instance, the Injustice story, you know, with Superman. Uh, then Clark, you see John Shiner also, like I said, John Shiner also comes back. Just a guest star on some episodes, and this one he guest stars when, you know, Clark sees like a vision of John, John I mean John Shiner, of uh, Jonathan Kent, Jonathan, his dad, working on the 
for him, and he goes to talk to his dad and tells him about you know the whole thing. Which Joe was like, "Well, do what you do best, Clark. Prove him wrong." He's like, "Son, an honest man makes the work honest." And I just like their conversation here where he's telling Clark, "You can be the hero, Clark. You know, Clark. You know, nobody's perfect." I was in purple. I couldn't even keep my temperature. I nearly killed a man and caught, you know, I got so much angry that it caused me a heart attack. You know, that's why I'm not here with you. I wish I was here with you, Clark. But I made that mistake and it's just too late for me. And he's like, but son, I know you can be the hero you can be. And, you know, just reminding me, you will be the hero. You know, and just encouraging Clark, you know, to be the hero he needs to be. Lois uh, takes a position in Africa, basically because she knows Clark's secret. Clark had a girl at the end of season nine, because Perry brought off her a job, so she goes to there, basically to protect Clark's secret. Meanwhile, Tess adopts the clone age of Lex Luthor, Alexander, basically to raise him right, so that when he grows up, he won't be a monster, basically, he won't be evil or anything. But Lazarus was a really good episode to start off, in my opinion. I enjoyed it, so. Alright, and another favorite episode of mine called Supergirl. Where you have a guy who's ready to now named Gordon Goffrey who, after Clark sent the Kandorians to Kandor, when they all went up there, Kandor I think it's called, um, pretty much Darkseid shows up. So Darkseid is able to use some of his evilness to get into this guy, this radio personality's host. And basically, this guy, Gordon Goffrey, talks about, you know, he hates vigilante, he's like the blur, even though the blur nearly saves his life, because an accident almost happens. Well, it was not blur, I'm sorry, it was Clark as Supergirl. You know, Clark coming back, and Clark is like, what's she doing back? And he goes, and he took the car, and he's like, you know, what are you doing back? Oh, I forgot, I mean, she's like, she's like doing some photo shoots, which she looks really sexy, I ain't gonna lie. But, she tells Clark about this darkness that's coming and that you're not ready to do it. She even tries to help Clark in the episode, tries to help him to fly. Clark is able to fly a little bit, but falls in the barn. But he ends up okay. That Clark was taking it, but since Clark has that evilness in his heart, you know, Lois is also in Africa doing some studies and talking with Carter Hall, aka Hawkman, who Hawkman talks to her about love, you know, about basically kind of talking to her about Clark and telling Clark that, you know, he's keeping an eye on Lois for him. And he sees, like, her as kind of like Shantiria, basically. Carter Hall, basically, he's Hawkman. He's supposed to, he's lived for centuries. You know, Ammon is well, Shantiria. They die, and then they see each other in another lifetime. I know it's hard to explain, but he sees Lois as Shantiria, and then gives Lois, gets a lot of slaps, I'm like, Try it again, you don't get it for real. I'm like, <laughs> I thought it was funny when Lois said that. Uh, or it might have been in this episode, but Godfrey might be planning to view all of his identity, but Lois goes undercover at a. Uh, apparently, Godfrey likes the darkness in him, like said. I don't know, a sex club or whatever, and Lois dresses up, uh, yeah, bondage, that bondage club or whatever. She dresses up one girl, take a picture of him, and he kidnaps Lois, tries to kill Lois, and of course Clark and uh, Clark show up to save her, save her, they do, before they can, though, you know, Godfrey faces Clark about to get this darkness into his heart until Clark uses a bracelet and is able to fight it off, he's like, Clark, you have this darkness in your heart, you have darkness in your heart. He could have took you over. If it's starting to take you over, you will become a great threat, you know. And she says, Lois, you okay? Even though she knows Clark's secret, you know, well, Clark doesn't know that, but overall it was good. Clark, of course, goes in this, you know, was wearing glasses in a black wig, telling I'm not leaving Earth, you know, I'm not going anywhere until I defeat this turn. She's like, Clark, you're not really ready yet. And I forgot to mention, though, this season also, at the end of this episode, Supergirl, Oliver, you know, talking to Lois, you know, 
tell him, well, you know, she goes with all over saying, well, you know, you ought to thank me, Oliver. I mean, this guy was about to expose your identity. He's like, but Oliver tells her, you know what? I'm tired of hiding in the dark. I'm tired of wearing the mask. Oliver decides, makes a decision to reveal himself, reveal himself to the world as Green Arrow, and he tells the whole press in his office, I'm Green Arrow. So, let's just say he will face some consequences for it, even though he thinks he's making the right decision. In this season, he will face consequences for it, so, but with his choice, hey, we all make good consequences. But overall, Supergirl was really good. It was good to see uh, Laura Vandervert again as Supergirl. She was in season seven, so that's when we first saw her character in the show. Alright, and then another favorite episode of mine is called Homecoming, where at the beginning you have uh, Brainiac, which we find is Brainiac 5. I'll tell you about right, Brainiac did get killed in Season 7, but in the future he's founded by the League, I forget what you call them. Yeah, who, uh, uh, the ring, I forget, what, what do you call it? Uh, yeah, the League, I don't know what you call it, but they're from the future, I just forget about it. But of course, it's the ring that can take you to the future, and of course, it's Brandy Fire from the future. And this lady, I guess, who has some kind of and you're towards Clark, you know, she talks, she says she's been talking to the kryptonite infected people, but Brain Exit, if I was ever used like a mind wipe on her to make her forget about Clark. Clark and Lois go to their homecoming, which means, is, this was a good episode, yeah, uh, sorry, the episode's called Homecoming, yeah. The reason I like it though, because you go back to old memories, you know, you learn some stuff in this episode, like, uh, you see a bit of the past of when Clark first talked to Mono when he tripped. He's like, Clark, what are you, man or Superman? You know, when she was dating Whitney four minutes at the time, you know, back in season one. Uh, and it's funny, though, because Lois is trying to get people to remember her, and people are like, what? she's like, Lois Lane? Uh, she was like there for, what, 30-something days, or just not the road very long, and nobody, nobody can remember it. It's just funny. And you see Clark looking at the wall of weird, because uh, remember Chloe disappeared for a while, and then these two kids come in. It's like Clark Kent. I'm like, you know her. You know uh, Chloe Sullivan. I'm like, we'll look up to her, you know. And they said that they keep the torch, you know, passing the torch well for her by writing good stories for the school and stuff. The real reason not up there anymore, but you know, it was cool to see it again. And you know, but Chloe told Clark and Pete about it, you know. So you do get some flashbacks. And, you know, you get Clark going to the past, like, for instance, him seeing what Jonathan did for him, because he's always felt guilt over Jonathan's death, you know, and he goes back in time and sees the night where, of course, Lionel uh, knew Clark's secret and told Jonathan, and Jonathan, Clark, and Brain Act 5 see Clark, I mean, see Jonathan pretty much beating up or get, fighting with, uh, you know, beating up uh, Lionel Luther. You know, because he protect the family, and and then he should bring it up. Says, well, you know what? Your father chose to do this. This was his fate. You know, his choice. It wasn't your fault, Kello. You gotta let it. You gotta let it go. He's like you. It's not saying to let your father go. You know, Clark just take it out. He's just saying to let it go. Your father's death wasn't wasn't your fault. He died for you, and that was his choice. Yeah, maybe he shouldn't have do what he did, but he did, and that was his choice. That was his fate. So, you know. You also see another guy in here. I forget. I forget what the character's name was, but it was in the second episode of Smallville, Metamorphosis, or something like that. Where I think the guy's name was Greg, who of course had like bug abilities or whatever. He's in this too. You see him looking at Clark when Clark and Lois. What I thought was funny was when they're, when they're announced queen, king and queen of the school or whatever and, and Clark and them just sitting there. That's when he sees Brennan at five. And in the present he's burning his friend's request like Oliver might need some of Clark's advice but Clark's like, well you need it. That was Oliver's decision, Brennan. Clark, you should be there for you, you, 
you, you're good at inspiring people. You should be there for your friend. You should be there for Oliver because Oliver could use your guidance. You know. Uh, Clark eventually uh, goes to the future, which nothing I like about this episode. He sees the future. He sees the future self, you know, Clark Kent with the glasses on and the hair, you know, just drawn back. <laughs> and basically, he is Superman in this future. And he sees that, and he sees that he is basically married to Lois, and he basically saves Lois from uh, the helicopter while she's in the helicopter, the helicopter's about to fall off the building until Clark, you know, grabs it with his abilities, picks it up, and this guy's about to see him, and then Lois, like, knocks the guy out. It's a Clark glasses and she says a kiss with him and then but he likes his future like you know this is your future Clark this is who you're gonna be and he goes back and he sees because he went to the future because he thought Greg the bug boy basically was gonna attack Lois but he said he told Greg he was like you know what Clark I, I did some trouble back in the day and Clark he helped me get out of some trouble I did some bad things and Clark helped me you know he's a good guy and you see that Clark you know helped change somebody you know, and uh, him and Lois have a dance. And, he, and of course, Oliver talks to the media about it, about him being Green Arrow. And when Clark is there to advise him, and at the end, you'll see him go to John in the grave, just letting him go, it's like, you know, like you're saying, I love you, Dad, but I gotta let you out. I, I gotta move on. And Clark just walks away from his grave at the end. When I'm home, coming, it was a good episode. For me, it was an episode you had to learn to, you know, learn to live in the past, the present, and future. You have to kind of learn to move on from things. You have to learn to move on. You have to learn to live in the now and sometimes look forward to the future. That's what it's come for me about. But overall, Homecoming was really good in my opinion. All right, another favorite episode of mine is called Isis. Uh, Clark, and this episode, wants to tell Lois a secret, even though she already knows. And Lois, who is going to uh, going to this museum, she has this artifact that she got from Egypt, and you know she's up on the roof waiting on Clark. Clark decides he's going to tell her his secret, and uh, she touches his amulet, and she gets the spirit of Isis, who was this Egyptian guy named Isis, who says how to recruit, resurrect her long lost love, Oris, but. It's pretty much going to wipe some people out of Earth, basically. It's sure to probably kill some people, and Clark can't allow her to do that. So he tries to stop Isis, even though it's hard for him to stop her because she has her powers. I do like it, though, when he tells her her secret. And Isis is like, that is no importance to me. She just flies off. And you have Cat Grant, who pretty much thinks that she is the horror. Isis walks into the, you know, and Lois is um, possessing Lois's body, walks into this museum, you know, uh, storage, this museum storage room, uh, you know, throws the security guard, Cat Grant takes a picture, and Ice is about ready to kill Cat, Cat Grant until Clark intervenes, you know, using his powers. Yeah. Clark goes to test to help her, and I saw this episode because this is where they begin to trust Tess a little more. They ask Tess, you know what, since Lois isn't here, you're in charge of it, you know. Well, I forgot to mention, she does help them find Isis, who is inhabiting Lois' body. And before, you know, Clark does try to stop her, she's able to use her abilities like to tie Clark up until Oliver shows up, you know, Green Arrow shows up. I like it though when he uses, like, what happens is they get the amulet out of her hand before she can, you know, commence her, Isis can do her sacrifice or whatever and bring her love back to life. Uh, Oliver shoots the shoots it, shoots it with an arrow, Clark grabs it and uses sea vision to destroy it. And doing that that gives Isis to go away. And like I said, they tell Tess that, you know, she can take over watch tower and Tess just walks away for a moment and starts to cry, you know, and happiness because they're glad that they finally trust her because she's able to kind of redeem herself, have her redemption basically for some of the bad stuff she did in the last season, you know, just to redeem herself, that they're happy that they finally trust her. Clark does tell Lois that he's a blur, but Lois, who already knew, 
basically what happens is <laughs> Cat comes with a pen and stabs Lois with it and Lois is, Lois is about to punch into Clark's top of her and she takes care of it and he's like they talk about the word like you know Clark the word he's never going to tell me who he is and she walks away and then Clark tells her you know what Lois I've had to hide in the shadows all my life and he's like Lois I am the blur and she jumps and he's like he's like you knew and they start kissing and Overall, I just was a good episode of my opinion. Yeah. It was good to see Lois Snow Clark's secret finally. Then, you know. Overall, I just was good in my opinion. Alright, another favorite of mine is called Harvest. Yeah. Clark and Lois get a, pretty much get a flat tire and they talk and Lois, so Clark is like, well, I heard believe that my boyfriend is from, is an alien, he's from another planet. And he's like, you're okay with that? And he's like, I love you, Clark. I'm okay with it. And she, she lets him know that she's okay with it. And he's like, she lets him know, like, Clark, you don't need to worry about me. Because this girl, she can take care of herself. And she also asks him about, you know, other times, like, you know, with the Phantom Zone, Kryptonian, and all that stuff. She sees Clark use his powers, you know, and they laugh about it. You know, when he <laughs> picks up the car with, with his strength, super strength, to fix the tire. You have this little girl come named Charlotte. They they take us to a village. Clark is gonna walk all the way to the storage I mean to the to the gas station. And of course, you know, hours later he uses super speed. He's like, Lois, Lois and then the cop shows up telling him, you know, asking him for help. He's like my girlfriend, I don't know where she's at. Was you when you go around Frank, he sees blood on Clark Ward. He found out that the area around his blue kryptonite and it bleeds Clark. Clark was like you know, it was like, No, it wasn't what you're thinking and they try to go find her and Lois is eating with these with Charlotte and her family and they talk about they da their daughter. They talk about, you know, the meteor show that happened in nineteen eighty nine. They got this kryptonite, these meteor rocks. That's basically they believe it's from God and Basically, he found out these people are not normal. They're actually nuts. This guy, he was a, a cult, basically. <laughs> they tell Lois, you're not going anywhere. That's what the Charlotte girl. She's with the world. All of a sudden, she turns evil, little girl, like saying, you're not going anywhere. They pretty much pass Lois out. And the clerk, again, because he's around blue kryptonite, doesn't have his powers. But this cop is also part of it. You know, when they hit the building, he, you know, he, he tells Clark, oh, I wish you didn't hear that. Boom, you know, knocks Clark out because again, Clark's around Blue Kryptonite. Around Blue Kryptonite, he has no powers. So, Clark will always have to try to find a way to escape. And Lois is even begging the man, please don't do this, this is wrong. And, and he's, like, he's like, it's okay. You know, but Clark, you know, before they can use a Blue Kryptonite fire to kill her, Clark jumps over and just, yeah, you know, gets on himself, you know, just to protect Lois. He was like, and she treats him saying that, yes, he's a god, and he'll bring his wrath, saying that Clark is a god, which he's not, but they're able to speed their way out of there eventually. <sighs> yeah. And pretty much, like 15, Alexander, lowers, I mean, Tess throws a party, a birthday party for Alexander, and you know everything goes well until he starts writing the S symbol of the blur, and he starts having memories. Uh, Alexander does, and he goes to the boy, and he's like, and "This is where Clark was, you know. I told him I would let them in a right here. I told him our friendship would be legendary. This is why I tied his first bow for him, and." He's like, you want to talk about Tess? I'm like, you got darkness in your heart, you Tess. And he starts saying Tess and Tess. He's like, stop it, Alexander, stop it. And he's like saying, and he's getting to her and she slaps him. He's like, Alexander, I'm sorry. He's like, my name is Lex Luthor. And then Alexander just escapes, runs away. And at the end of the episode, you see him basically shaving his head and just having a smile, eventually becoming, starting to become the monster that Lex is, basically. Yeah. But overall, Harvest was really good in my life, and I enjoyed it. Alright, another favorite episode of my. Oh, and at the end of the episode, you do have a Lois and Clark uh, making love. And then, 
ambush, another favorite of mine is ambush. Well, at the beginning of Lopes of Orc, you know, just messing around in the farm. They're kind of flirting with each other, you know, you know, they're kissing and stuff, and before they're about to go at it again, uh, General Sam Lane, played by Michael Ironstein, and Lucy Lane, uh, Lois's father and sister, show up, and they say, well, <laughs> Clark has his shirt off, and Lois has got his jersey on. They kind of interrupt him in the awkward moment, and she's like, hey, Daddy, hey, Lucy. It's like, well, the family's together again, and they're basically coming over for thanks for because th it's Thanksgiving. Uh, pretty much, the general Sam Lane does not trust Clark. At uh, first, what he does is give Clark a list of chores to do. Clark does them, but he also Clark has to go take care of a fire or whatever, and he thinks that Clark might have something to do, something bad. You know, he's working with these vigilantes that he's that he's working on this Vigilante Act, Protection Act, to stop vigilantes basically. And Clark is not seeing them get along with Sam at all. And Sam even does a backup check. He's like, you know what, Clark? I can't find nothing on you. No history, but you've been to crime scenes a lot. I was like, are you are you a vigilante or something? Are you not? Can I trust you to marry my daughter? You know, to be with Lois. But you also find that the team led by Rick Flagg, the suicide squad, who wants to protect the vigilantes by pretty much killing Sam Lane because Sam Lane is in charge of it. They're basically going to send the target. That they're going to send a missile to kill him. Lois and her father argue. Clark does get mad a little bit at times, but her and, you know, Lois tells him, like, if you do with me, you're going to deal with my father. You have to deal with my family. Father. That's the way it is. Eventually, you know, Sam just says, Lois, come with me. Until Lois eventually stands up to her dad and tells him, no, I'm going to be with Clark. He's the one I want to be with. He's the one for me. I was like, no, Dad, I'm not going anywhere. No, General, I'm not going anywhere. Where they can walk away, leave a little initial hits, and Sam and Lucy worry until the blur, until Clark shows up, you know, using super speed to save her up out of there. And then the blur and green arrow show up to put flag, not the truck out. We're going to stop them, but of course he has another meteor, not a meteor, <laughs> a me you know, another uh, vigilante with him who is able to, like, teleport, like, night crawls, like, teleport, we're fighting the night, night crawler, no, not night crawler, but we're flagging the other guy, they teleport out of there to safety. Oh, Emil, that's the guy's name. But him and Emil get away eventually. But at the end, at the episode, you know, you do see them have a nice standard. But before that, and then Sam and Clark and all, but you, Sam pretty much asked Clark the question, as you can say, pretty much asking Sam with his permission and blessing to marry Lois. Yeah. But overall, a good episode. You know. I enjoyed it. Yeah. All right, then another favorite of mine is called Abandoned. Um, this is kind of about an episode where Lois Clark and Tess find out about being abandoned, basically. Well, Tess, especially, Tess, Tess has a dream about this neighborhood she grew up in. Not neighborhood, but she grew up in an orphanage. Uh, pretty much what I'll go ahead and spoil it is that she is the daughter of Lex Luth, of the... Uh, She's the sister of Lex Luthor, but she's also the daughter and the daughter of Lionel Luthor. Lana Gilbert production. Now, if y'all remember in season two, there was this woman claiming to be Clark and Lex's mother, even though she was not. But she was actually, I believe she was actually Tessa's mother because there was a nanny kind of back in the day that, of course, Lionel was sleeping with, and they had a daughter that Lana gave for adoption, and I believe that was Tess. So... You have Granny Goodness, who was a follower of Darkseid. Basically, you know, lives in Apostolos Prison or to cause more darkness to people's hearts. They have like this, it's kind of like the Mark of the Beast in a way. It kind of looks like a, a horseshoe on top of people's head. Mark of the Beast, you know, they have this darkness in their heart and they're going to be Darkseid's followers. And Granny Goodness tortures these children in an orphanage because Clark goes with her. They torture them by putting this on their mind and torturing them. She's like, I'm proud of my girls. And she tells Tess, I know you. Uh, Tess's real name is Lutessa Lena Luther. So that's her full name. Uh, when Clark does help Tess, though, 
uh, just you know they're gonna basically lock up. Grand Guinness locked up in a room. They're able to lock Clark up. Well, because they have kryptonite, and Clark, you know, Grand Guinness tries to read off his mind to Clark. You know, is able to whoo, use like kind of a short of his super record as a freeze breath, just able to whoo, blow it and get a, and, and get rid of the kryptonite and get out of there. Of course, you know, uh, the cast has a fight with Granny's girls, and there's one girl, I swear she's got like Freddy Krueger gloves or whatever, but eventually Tess is able to kick her ass, and they use whips too, and, you know, but Tess is able to fight them off, and Lois watches a videotape of her mother. She has like this thing, you know, so it's like a little blue duck crystal, basically, a little blue they call it, but it's a, it's like a crystal that her mother gave her and they put up out the window which Lois does and Lois watches a video of her mom telling her that she loves her and she didn't want her to see her die and he's like telling her about how she should live her life and stuff about you know how much she loves Lois and I just don't want to explain it but it was Terry Hatcher who uh, played Lois Lane she plays on the lane as Ellen Lane in the video that Lois is watching uh, as y'all know Terry Hatcher if you're a Superman fan she played Lo I mean she played Lois Lane in Lois and in Lois and Clark, the new adventure Superman, a uh, co-star with Dean Cain. So, but overall, that was a really good scene to watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but at the end, you know, Lois learns of it. Uh, Granny Goodness, eventually, at the end, for the lower dark side, she also talks to Gordon Godfrey and Dead said, I can't be said, you know. Uh, two other followers of Darkseid and their help preparing the way. But Abandoned was a really good episode. Like I said, the title episode was about being abandoned and maybe learning where you're from and your heritage and all that stuff. But overall, Abandoned was a really good episode in my opinion. Alright. For me, this is one of the best in the series and this episode is called Luther. Luther, yeah. Clark learns that there's another existence that Tess kept alive, you know, behind everyone's backs, which uh, they turn, they go to this Lex, the Lex clones, and Clark eventually wants to destroy it. He's like, you know what, Luther is Luther, it's poison. And there's a kryptonite box. And Clark, that was a good gun box, activates it, and he sends them to another Earth, which is pretty much Earth 2, whatever they want to call it. I'll call it Earth 2, I don't give a damn. And in this universe, he switches place with another Luther, which is Clark Luther, which Clark Luther is called Ultraman. He is a killer, basically. You, you know, you have him, Clark, Clark Kent himself, in the Luther Mansion. You see Lionel again. It was great to see John Glover come back. And he's telling Clark to dress yourself. Be prepared. You know, and they sword fighting with Clark. They're like, you got to be prepared. He's like, you're Clark Luther, the man of tomorrow, you know. And you find out that he, well, kind of breaks Clark Luther to kill, basically, because when Clark can't, as a child of the type of bad guy, he's like, no, I'm killing me. And you find out that this Clark Luther has been killing people. And Clark Luther, well, you also find out he's basically an evil version of Clark. Instead of being found by the Kents, he was found by Lionel and raised to basically be evil. And basically, he was found out that he murdered Lex in that Earth, and that him and Tess, you know, Tess does love their, love with their father as well, but Tess and Clark Luther, they have a, a relationship. They, they sleep together, and she shows you that the Clark, and Clark tells us not me. This Clark Luther has a scar, and Clark Luther himself comes to the Earth. Yeah, makes out with Tess and tells her that he wants to take over the world here. And when he finds out that Tess betrays him, you know, Lois, she she calls Lois. I do like hit that Lois is in the coffee shop, trying to get coffee. And this guy, you know, just say, "Hey, Lois, this, someone's calling you." He's like, Tess is like, "Lois, when I call you, it's an important, important reason. I get your ass up." Basically, telling her to get her butt up to the block tower because she needs her. And this guy's just like, "Lois, just follows the Lois." He, this guy just follows Lois, but then Lois just walks away. And then Clark Luther shows up using his powers, I guess he could fly. And, you know, Lois is like, Clark, Clark Luther is like, no, 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 no. 
you know, Corey, if this is another Rick Hampson, and he just pushes her out of the way, he's like, get up, Tess, get up! He's like, I'm going to own this world. So as you can tell, there's going to be a fight between them. Uh, you know, Clark talks to, uh, Clark, Clark talks to Lana, who's, who's got like a camp set up nearly at the fortress, so what they're going to do. To get the box back, he has to go face Oliver. He kind of kidnaps Lois, and he tells Lois who he is. He's like, I'm not Clark Luther, I'm not Ultraman. And Lois, this Lois, you know, who's engaged to Oliver Queen on this earth, she trusts him. And when he goes to confront him at the Watchtower, Clark, I mean, Oliver kind of shuts the lights off and throws Kryptonite, which weakens Clark. And, you know, pretty much Lino knocks him out. And says so like, yep, Clark, you really screwed up. And he gets a belt and has the curtain and beating him. And so Clark is able to get the, you know, until uh, someone turns it off. I think it was actually Oliver who wakes back up from being unconscious. Wakes it up. He's like, yeah, I know you're, yeah, I know you're telling what you're doing. And then he uses the mirror box and Lionel Light like, jumps in. And he basically finds he falls into that. But anyway, Clark gets up back. He finds that there was a bit of a fight, as you can see. Oliver's got kryptonite arrow, and they're prepared to fight him. My only disappointment in this episode, though, Clark Luther, I wish we had more of that. I wish we had more of, you know, Tess, Lois, and Oliver maybe fighting Clark Luther. I'm like, because you see, like, there's a lot of that damage, but, you know. But, you know, Tess is upset for what she did, lying Clark stuff, and... Clark comes to her at the mansion and tells her, you know what, when we do, we'll do it out and when it's time. We do what we have to do. And then at the end you have Lionel, who comes and Lionel's talking to a coffee shop man and giving him coffee. There's a, you know, thanks for the coffee. And then he looks at the camera, Jim Glover's like looking straight at you. And the camera's like, you don't really think I miss how it, you, you think I really wanted to miss how it turned out, did you? You know, and then walks away and, so let's just kind of rebuild Luther Corp. Try to buy it again. Yeah. Alright. Then another favorite of mine is called Icarus. Uh, Clark proposes a marriage to Lois and he does like, you know, he does like a blow call on her. He sends like flowers flying from the sky and says, Lois Lane, the woman I want to be with, the right one for me. Lois Lane, would you marry me? And he asks her to marry me. She says yes. They have an engagement party where everybody's there for them, including Oliver, uh, Emil, Dr. Emil Hamilton, and Tess and them are just celebrating. Yeah, just for, just for how happy they are. Oliver's attacked by Metropolis citizens who uh, give a man trying to mug a woman and Oliver chases them and these people start to attack him. Carl Hall shows up and they're able to use, I think, Stark was able to use some of her powers to get them out of there. Then you have General Slade who is still alive. Slade who gets injured who... The heroes decide to go all on the ground just for safety. Because Slade is coming after them, coming to kill them, basically. Uh, Slade brings in a middle test and was requesting. They ask him about, only you know the heroes, and of course they lie to him. It's like, it's legal what you're doing. They kind of help keep them hostage until Lois is able. She finds like an escape room and tests his room just to get out of there. Carter arrives, basically, and he rescues Lois. But uh, he fights with Slade. He was like, have a bit of a sword fight. He's just a talk man, of course, which is a pretty cool, cool costume and mask. Until Slade, like, stabs him. You know. And before Lois dies, though, he's able to jump in and Clark, and, you know, as he's dying, he's, he, oh, Clark is like, Carter, Carter, thank you. And Clark's like, you're welcome, Clark. But, you know, this is a life for me to live, and he dies, like, and Clark and Lois are upset about his death because he made the sacrifice with them and then they have like a nice funeral form. But before they do that though, Oliver, I mean Clark, 
is able to send Slade to the Phantom Zone. I guess when he's like losing Deathstroke, he's got kind of like a, a patch, like a metal patch on his eye and like kind of a knife in his hand or whatever. Clark, Clark is able to send him to, he bashes him to the Phantom Zone. The heroes come together, they have a, a nice funeral for him, which, you know, a good funeral. You know, everybody's sad and Stargirl is sad because she was close to call her the most. And then they saw an um, owner and object suddenly evaporates or whatever, and they all just pass out at the end of the episode. But overall, it was just really good in my opinion. It was good to see the heroes in trouble and, you know, people coming after them. Even though, you know, they're the good guys, trying to say people, people think that they're, some people in the show think that they're the villains, but they're not. Another favorite episode of mine is called Collateral. Uh, in this episode, Clark and his friends uh, and the heroes are all in the. Uh, you find out they're in this other world, this well, virtual reality world or whatever, and you see Chloe experiment on them. Chloe's actually trying to get them out. You have the she's helping. Well, Chloe's been doing for these months is helping the Suicide Squad out just to protect them, even though they don't trust her, you know. Chloe, you know, first comes to Oliver, who was, Oliver's been, like, locked up for being crazy, you know, until, you know, Chloe's like, do you trust me? Like, yes, I trust you. And they fight some guys off, but, like, Chloe, like, shoot some guys down and, you know, was able to, she's able to handle a fight once in a while. And, uh, you know, she tells Clark, you need, Clark, you need to trust me. You need to get out of here. And Clark is like, I can't. And her and Oliver jump off the top of the Daily Planet. They get out of the virtual reality world, and you find all the heroes are in sustained comas, basically. And they have to get them out. Because if they don't get them out, they'll be trapped in this virtual world forever. And Lois is able to convince Clark to trust, trust him, to, tr tr to trust Chloe. And Chloe, uh, you know, you first you have Black Canary who uh, doesn't trust her at all, and her and Chloe, you know, getting a bit of fisticuffs, which that was pretty cool. And uh, Chloe and Lois said that they're ready to trust Chloe, but the military shows up, I guess, to the slaves people show up, Slade Wilson's people, and they use Chloe's avatar, and they try to trick her, and, you know, until, you know, she's able to verse herself, and it's like, you can't do this. You can't escape me. And Lois is ever talking about like Clark. We can fly out of here. Like Clark, you can do it. I believe in you. Clark does believe in himself. And for the first time in this virtual world, Clark actually flies for the first time. Not doesn't fly as Kello, but as Clark. You know, as he would fly as Superman. But overall, that was really cool. And then, you know, some of Slice Man, Rick Flag and Suicide Squad and the Heroes, they fight with some of them. Which is pretty cool. Overall, it was an interesting episode of Collider about this virtual war and everything. It was really cool. But overall, another favorite episode of mine. Alright. Then another favorite episode of mine is called Beacon. And that's when you find out that Lionel Luther, like I said, who came to this Earth, basically Lionel tells Tess, you know, Luther Corp is what helped him with the arms, and he gets security to get her out of there. And basically what he wants to do is find Lex, find Alexander, basically, to, to make him a Luther, you know, that he is his blood relative son, and he wants to, of course, find his son. And this Lionel, like I said, he's evil. In the few times in this episode and other episodes, he'll say, you know, he's proud of Lex for what Lex did, you know, when Lex, when Lionel, when Tess tells Lionel, or to Lionel that this person, Lionel, Lex killed him, you know, Lex murdered him, and I was like, well, that's what a true leader would do, murder somebody. It's like, I'm just saying that my doppelganger here in this version betrays his own son for Clark Kent. They have a lot for him to do that. 
then you find out Martha's holding a VR rally and she gets shot, which you find out, you know, Clark and all of her investigate. It's got kryptonite in it. And of course you find out Alexander, who's played by Lucas Gabriel, who played, I think, in, who played uh, the Teenage Lex, Teenage Lex, basically. He played him in Teenage Lex also in uh, season six. But anyway, you find this version of Alexander, you know, when, like, he first sees Lex, like, he's like, I saw, I, I saw, I threw you down the window, it was the best day of my life. I was like, I know some, but you know what, this time, I'm here to be your father and help you. Help you become the Luther that you were meant to be. You know. And he tells Alexander, he goes like, just join me. And Alexander says, join him. And, you know, Oliver comes down, they tell Oliver, you know, you're not going to be working here. Because Oliver, had, remember, he had to talk with Tess to have an office there, but they throw him out of the office. I was like, punch me. Security's on his way. He's like, and if you're accusing my son of a crime, I suggest you get out. And uh, Oliver tells Clark them about it, and they say, we're going to get Alexander away from him. Alexander, they basically take him to the... Lionel takes Alexander to the... Luther mentioned that he's going to be living there. Martha's there telling him to watch your back, you know, stay away from Clark. Basically kind of threatening him, as you say. And I was like, I bet you were someone in love. You think they're about to kiss She's like, stay away from my son or else. And before she can do anything, Alexander, who overhears that maybe he's on the him, knocks out Martha, knocks out Lionel, and basically he's going to go kill Clark. He's got a gun, but it's a kryptonite gun. He's like, you know, you know, stay out of this test. He's like, he's like, you're not evil yet. You just, we still help you in. He has a change of heart, and at the end of the episode, you see that, you know, Tess is like hugging him, it's like, it's okay, saying it's okay. She tries to maybe, she tries to kill him, but, of course, he's indestructible, because she thought he was dangerous. Uh, Clark, you know, saves, before the fire can burn, uses super speed and gets his, uh, gets his, gets Mark out of there. Again, like San Antonio, she's back as well. And he gets Lionel out of there. He just kind of throws Lionel and he comes to sleep at Lionel. In the meanwhile, he just leaves him. And Lionel sees his stands there watching the mansion burn down to the ground. And the supers watch as the vote goes well. And the, so the video is, is repealed by the votes, which is a good thing, I believe. So, you know, overall, it was a really good episode, in my opinion. Oh, wait a minute. Not Icarus. I'm sorry. Deacon. <laughs> Alright. And then another favorite of mine is called Masquerade. Clark does make it more serious around the world. Chloe, Clark Lois calls him and says, Clark, I'm coming here in London because I can see your face right now. And his face by accent goes worldwide. So people, be, you know, Lois tells Clark, Clark, you need to come up with an identity or something. You need to have a mask. You need to do something. He shows you a a mask, you know, like some glasses and a hoodie. He's like, I don't like this, Lois. I can, I'll be careful next time. And I was like, okay, I'm just trying to help Clark. And he won't listen. And Clark doesn't even realize people realize him as the blur. This guy won't, you know, who's like a, a meteor, not a meteor. Oh, guy's a meteor. And there's a guy who's a corner. Starts talking with him. He's like, well, I like you a lot. Starts chit chatting with Clark. And. <laughs> He's about to fall like in a super employer, like grabs him, picks him up. He's like, well, you were like, hmm. And he goes, Lois, I Lois, I need to come up with a masquerade or something. And he finds out, you know, wearing the glasses, like, you know what, this is my identity. The Clark Kent identity. He's like, you know, the blur should be just going to Clark Kent is this guy. So, you know, Lois tells him, you got to act a certain way, close your shoulders a bit, you know. And this is, I like this episode mainly because... Clark realizes that he's got a pair of glasses on, he's got to act kind of goofy, so the other episode he can, you know, act clumsy and stuff, you know, act like a fool basically, make, make a fool of other things, it's just that he'll have to do that to hide his identity as a lawyer, basically as you can say, Superman, so basically say we get the actual Clark Kent, the Daily Planet, model man of Clark Kent that, of course, Clark will become, but even though, you know, in his heart, you know, Superman, who will become, that's who he is in his heart, who he really is. You know, no Clark Kent, that's just the disguise he has to pull off. To let people know that he's not the blue, that he's just normal as everybody else. Does that make you believe it?
Clark discovers a word of a serial killer that name is Zed, who's a disciple of the dark side. And you also find out Chloe, who's, you know, in a revolver, all of her, of course, has, has identity been wearing sunglasses and the E. And they hear someone calling them, and the serial killer just said, eventually they kidnap Chloe and, and you know, all of them close. Let's introduce yourself. So they start fighting these guys, they kick their ass, which I give Chloe that Chloe can kick ass herself. And her and always is like, I love you, they say, they start kissing. And uh, he kidnaps Chloe. What I like about this episode also is he's trying to convince Chloe to go through these seven deadly sins, basically. She has to get lust for Clark, like Clark wanting to kiss Clark, or her wanting to be Lois, or her wanting to be practical or selfish to go with Oliver. You know, you know, every, you know, forget these things. And Chloe's very smart and with a good heart. She's able to resist the says, you know, temptation and the dark side. Eventually, you know, all these plans are beating his head. But eventually, because of that darkness in his heart. You find out that he gets the mark of the beast, the sign of the dark side, you know, on his head. You know, because what they, what they're going to turn off, believe what's hard, you see it on his head. And then that's where the episode ends. We all enjoyed the episode, you know. Well, I'm going to start with doing kicking ass in the episode, and all, I mean, Clark finding the identity of Mom and Clark Kent, you know, which is cool. Another thing of mine is called Fortune. Yes, guys, we've got a couple more. I'm sorry. Fortune. Uh, this is where Satan sends a magical cha champagne to Clark and Lois. And eventually, because of this, they end up partying all night. And they get drunk. Clark wakes up with, like, a pet monkey. <laughs> like, he wakes up in his bed with a pet monkey. And he's engaged and married. Not to Lois, but to Chloe. And Lois and Clark wake up. <laughs> Lois and Clark wake up in a, not Lois and Clark, Lois and Oliver wake up in a train station, her shoes get stolen, and she's like, we're going to go find my ring, so she says to go look for the ring, and you find out also, this was just a fun episode, Emil, who was just up as Elvis, he starts singing as Elvis, and him and uh, uh, Tess are singing, which I thought was pretty cool, Tess looked really sexy, and they're basically trying to find out where they, they, these guys kidnap Emil, they're not cops. I guess they're like the Russian mob or something. They steal a truck from him. Because in the video they were so drunk that Clark knocked these guys out and they take the truck. And then Emil was there, so they're being Emil. They're going to crush his head. And so Clark has saved him. I like to do an episode where Lois decides to go get her. Uh, kind of goes, they, they go into this. They go into the black shop, they go into this casino, and they, Clark, Lo, Oliver, and Lois and Oliver go on a cover as a uh, showgirl, which I thought was funny. <laughs> Even Clark sees him laughing, and he's like, Oliver's like smiling, and then he's doing this. <laughs> you know, I just thought that was hilarious. <laughs> that cracked me up. And then you have them fighting a little bit, you know, a little fisticuffs in there. You know. And then, before Mel can get his head crushed, he's doing this, oh, you know, all of his, I mean, Clark is it, knocks these guys out. Clark just pushes them away and says, you're okay now, no. Afterwards, they check out the, uh, uh, the video. They watch the video of how drunk they were, and you see Tess and Emil hooking up, and they're like, no, 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 just off the camera. And it was funny, and Clark's even embarrassed by the video, and he's like, well, let's, let me tell you something. I love you. It's a moment of my dreams. <laughs> Which I thought was funny. Chloe says leave again, but Clark, you know, I was like, well, you're coming with me, and they basically go outside of the first city, just trying to have a life together. Overall, Fortune, really fun episode, in my opinion. I enjoyed it a lot. Fun episode. One of the best, in my opinion. Alright, another favorite of mine is called Schooling. Schooling? I can't say it right. Uh, Tess pretty much, you know, tells Clark that Alexander has not just Lex's DNA but her doing that his DNA and you know she's like Oliver he needs some guidance you know he's like well, he needs some guidance like from you you know like your parents got to use how to use your powers and stuff you see him lifting up a tractor he's like Clark's like you don't want to control your powers you need to learn to control them and he's like well you know I'm leaving them you know Alexander tells him to leave them 
And then when he finds out that Clark is a little like, you're the brother of Clark? Why didn't you tell me? And Clark is, you know, like, you need to learn to control your power. you got you got to have that control. And you hear Matez talking about Alexander and Alexander hears this, and Lino, who was even asking Tess, where is my son, Tess, you know, when he's in the, the lab where Lex is building the, uh, making the clones, of course. And like I said, the other episode of Lionel, or this episode would say, a true Luther would do, and, you know, he tries to get, you know, even uh, Lois is snooping around, and she gets kidnapped by Lionel. Lionel eventually is able to get his hands on him, well, because Alexander walks to the, to the burnt Luther mansion, which has, you know, been burned down. Lionel gives him record tonight, which gives him basically the Lex aside, and, you know, he's, he says to his father, what are you doing? And Lionel says, you know, no, Luther was lesson number one. We'll never let anybody get in your way. And he just, he's going to shoot and kill Lois. And pretty, pretty much Alexander, of course, he has a crush on Lois. You know, you know this because he has a heat vision and the court has to grab him. Even though Lois is not sure about Alexander, at first I'm sorry, I go over all my videos, but that's just me. Because, you know, Clark, we can't trust him. We don't, we don't know what he's capable of. He's got a bit of Lex now. like, well... Clark tells her, you know what, Lois, you have no idea how it was, you know, I felt alone, like a freak, you know, you don't know how it feels to have these abilities, you know, it, you feel just alone, you know, completely, and you need somebody there for you, but anyway, the better it was where Lionel kidnapped her, kidnapped Lois, well, he's going to shoot Lois, like, she's she like, the real Lionel I know, we can get his hand to her, he's like, I'm not the Lionel you knew, the Lionel, or two Lionel says, before you shoot her though, I was in the same her, getting her jacket and stuff, taking care of her, and he tries to kidnap her, and he's like, look, well, you know, this ain't gonna happen between us. Clark, he's gonna be my husband. I will Clark until he knocks her out, until Clark shows up. And even Clark fight a little bit, he's able to get the red curtain off Clark. And he just like, you know, I'm gonna kind of go be a hero for myself. And I basically said he's super well basically because he throws a shirt and you see the black shirt, which is, I believe, super well, I guess, from the comics. Yeah. And of course, he's changed the name of Connor Kent. I, guess, I think he goes a little bit with Martha, so. Basically just to protect him from Lionel. And Lionel pretty much is at the end, at Alex's grave, grave site, saying, My son, we could have ruled the earth together. And so just we came back dark side, who can sense the darkness in Lionel's heart. Just maybe neighbors upstairs making noises, but Lionel, well, I hope you guys can see, I hope it's not too bright. But dark side visits Lionel basically offering him a deal. You know, scoring was scoring was a good episode. I can't say it right. I know. And then another one of the best episodes, in my opinion, is called Kent. Yeah. Uh, Martha gives Clark and Lois the deeds of family farm that they can have it, but Clark and Lois decide to, of course, move into an apartment together. And it's like, you know, Lois, you know, Clark, if Michelle needs you to be, you know. The board, and that's what they needed to be, so you need to be there. So they decided to pack up and move their things. Uh, meanwhile, Carl Luther, pretty much who had his kryptonite box, which Clark destroyed, by the way, but Luther, Clark Luther kept his, switches the bodies, switches with Clark Kent again and Clark. Clark Luther decides that he's going to try to rule the world again. He wants to kill Wild this time, and he offers Tess to show up. He even goes on a date with Tess, and Tess lies to him, he knows about ready to kill her before Clark can show up. But anyway, Clark, meanwhile, in the episode, this is when you have John Shiner coming back, or two version. Uh, you see Clark at a funeral, Clark Kent at a funeral, which Clark Luther, of course, killed Oliver Queen. You hear Jonathan Kent saying, you know, an angry Jonathan Kent, you know, saying, spitting on his grave, saying, he ruined it for me, you know, he ruined my, my crops and stuff, ruined my land, the son of a bitch, you know, you know, those. When she recognizes Clark, well, she's a crook tonight, and she tells Lois, tells Clark, you need to be away from the swap hole. They see you, they're going to use crook tonight. Everybody knows, all we're told, everybody in the world calls this witness, which is the grand crook tonight, and how, the grand meteor, which is to kill him. So, Clark tries to go talk to uh, John, I, I mean, Jonathan Kent to help him out, and Kent tells him, I was like, I got the most one man. I'm going to be rich to get my cross back. He's able to convince him, like, Another version, I'm your son. You know, he tells him who he is. 
for Jonathan doesn't listen, but when he begins to listen more, he's like, you're a good man, you know, you should go try to do the Martha again. He's like, he's like, it just didn't work out, you know, he's like, well, you need to try again, you know. And he kind of tells him a line, you know, about being a good man or whatever. And, you know, I do like the moment between them. He's like, well, I'll see you later, son. You know, and they're forever you but the whole go that, you know, Tess and Emil, uh, Tess and the uh, movie club, I think, use the mirror, the group in that box to bring him, to bring Clark back. Yeah. Yeah, Lois and Mel simply use the Kirk on the box spring floor back and he takes them to lose. They fight a little bit. And then he takes them to the board and like, Look, I'm sorry that you were raised by that one and not the camps. But there's a, you can still become a better man. You still have redemption, Fort Luther. And he goes, This year, probably just for solitude. And it isn't back to the other earth. And maybe, hopefully, Clark Luther had some redemption. So. To use his powers for good and to help with the support of Jarrell. So overall, Kent was really one of the best episodes. I liked the reunion and stuff with John Scheidner and their moments to talk in, which I thought was really good in my opinion. But overall, Kent was a really great episode in my opinion. One of the series, one of the smallest, best episodes in my opinion. Alright. And then another favorite of mine is Domain. Domain. They pretty much learned that General Slade escapes the fam's house of Clark and decides to go over there to learn who's opened the portal to make sure that there are no because if you remember in season 6 there were some phantoms that had come out caused some danger in season 6 and Clark might have to stop them so Oliver of course follows Clark but you find out it's a trick that it was General Zod who set it up Zod of course went to Kandor but I guess like I said before the Kandor people Kandorians they sent him to the phantom zone as punishment for his crimes but he's okay with it. You know, Zod has these fights. Basically, he does this to get revenge, you know, on Clark. You know, he's like, you're not a good man. I'm like, you're a brother. You're like my brother. He was like, close it. My brother was like, well, like Cain and Abel was like, hey, which one are you, Clark? Which one are you, Clark? I was like, well, I wouldn't kill you. Uh, you see them sort of fight and they kill and Clark has a good, you know, it's kind of like his gladiators or something in this episode. They ever use a gladiator fight. You know, but Clark doesn't kill him. And so I said, next time you kill, so I kill the killer, but it's like this. Next time I'll kill you instead. Or, or someone, you know, makes a point Oliver. Uh, Zod so decides to talk to Oliver. Tell him, I know about the Dark Side. And so tells him that he made a deal with Dark Side. You know, that he'll let him rule over the Phantom Zone, you know. Because Zod, Zod wants to do that because of his ego, wants to rule basically, kneel before Zod. But we're going to see Cal and Blue come back, you know, for a final time. And before, you know, they have Clark and Oliver fighting, there's some nice slow motion season of them fighting and pushing Oliver back and Clark pushing, you know. Because Clark doesn't have his powers at all in the family, he's completely just human. And, you know, before anything could happen, though, they're able to get the crystal, or able to get escape the Phantom Zone. And so I was like, what? But pretty much you find out that they tricked Azad, you know, that Oliver was going to follow his play the whole time, you know, that they were planning to steal the key back to just to get out of there. Uh, Azad did also merge with the original Azad, so he's pulling now with Azad, you know, because if I remember season 9, Azad was actually a clone. But of course, they had to just destroy the key to the port of the Phantom Zone so that us on as well as don't ever come to Earth. Oliver says, says to find out the Bell of Iron, which he talks to Tess about it. And this Bell of Iron, who was Darkseid's son, can actually defeat Darkseid. So Oliver's hoping to get that bow and defeat him. But overall, Dumbledore was a good episode. We get to see Kung Fu 
Again, I do feel he's still a weak Zod. I do prefer uh, Terrence Stamp and Michael Shannon to be better Zods, in my opinion. No, well, he was alright. No, Argoman was a really good episode, in my opinion. Very enjoyable. It was cool to see the Phantom Zone the last time, because we've seen the Phantom Zone in Season 6. We've seen it in Season 8. So, yeah, overall, really good. Alright. Another favorite episode of mine is called... Sorry. Prophecy. Uh, where Clark and Lois have a few days before the wedding, and they, you know, Lois... You know, Lois takes Clark, I mean, Clark takes Lois to the, the Fortress of Solitude, and Jarrell says, Will you accept being with my son? And she says, Like, I do. And basically, she gets Clark's powers for the day, just to be like, and she she forget how, how it feels, you know, see how their relationship could work. I guess you say Jarrell's testing that. And Lois just loves it. <laughs> She's like, super speeding around the office, you know, doing this, looking around, <laughs> using her ability, just having daytime fun with it. Uh, Clark is teaching her how to use her super hearing. As I Clark, you know, Clark is like, well, I can't save everybody. And, you know, he's trying to tell her, you know, I can't save everybody. Of course, he still has his glasses on. And he's trying to convince her, you know, I can't save everybody in the whole world. I can't do that. You know. Uh, but Lois hears something about a lady being robbed, and she tells lady finds a star girl who, Corny Whitmore, star girl. That she's being controlled by Torment. Torment has a league of villains like uh, Metallo, Black Manta, Captain Cold, and some of those villains. Solomon Grunty, Metallo, Captain Cold, and Royalty. Royalty, I can't say her name right. Until, you know, that was never talked to him. But Torment and Torment was like, well, you know what? I'll kill the boy. I'll kill Clark Kent if you don't do what I say. So she puts his. Chip on which uh, so many shows like good go kill the blur and she never does too and Clark is able to talk her back into it and Clark is eventually able to destroy Torment's toys able to take his phone and destroy it he's like Torment listen no matter what you villains do against me I'll always be there to stop you always how do you know I want to the world you know I'm like well, then the fun won't be last forever, would it, Toy Man? And Toy Man eventually agrees with that. And it's just back in jail. All of you, meanwhile, during the episode, is trying to locate the bow when he sees Cora. Cora's like trapped. It's kind of like, it becomes like an Indian Arizona and Charter type thing where she's trapped. Like, she's trapped in a four shell, then all of her saves are out of it. Her and all of her, you know, have to use bow and arrows. They have to shoot one arrow to get to the Orion. But Clara calls Jarrell, tells him that it's not your destiny, you have another destiny somewhere else. But my Lois and Clark decide, you know, to go ahead in the future and decide to be married together. You know, she's like, goodbye, kill Alan. She uses the Legion Ring, that's Legion Ring, to go back and set, to go to the future. Where Clara says, you know, this is where your destiny is set. You know, it's Clark's, it's Kilo's destiny to defeat. Dark side, basically, as he's telling her. But Clark, I mean, all of them the bow of Orion. The Orion, the bow of Orion, is almost grabbed it. But Brandon Guinness shows up, uses her force powers, I guess, grabs it and destroys it. Is like you will be a great son to us. And you know, she's able to put up more. You know, the mother of the beast. She's able to. You know, control his brain so that that darkness can completely enter into in, in, in him. And then she sends him after Gold Kryptonite, which will take Cloak's powers away. If we learn that, it'll take Cloak's powers away forever. So, Lois calls, calls off the wedding, tells Clark that, uh, you know, I won't be in your way. I'm just too much in your way, Clark. I love you. But I'm, I'm just too much in your way. I love you, but I gotta go. You know, and she says, I'm to marry him, basically. Alright. Guys, before I get to my last favorite episode of Small World, I'm gonna get some okay ones. So don't worry, it's only three episodes, and we're one hour 14 minutes in. But our first okay episode is Shield. I wanna get to these first. Yeah. 
Okay. It's just three and everything. I'm going to start with S.H.I.E.L.D. In this episode, well, we took a long thought secret. She goes, takes a position in Egypt. She's calling Perry right like, where are you, Perry? And like I, I mentioned the whole thing about Carter Hall and, you know, but Lois is an episode of with Carter Hall and he's keeping an eye on Meanwhile, Clark uh, meets Cat Grant, who's a new reporter who, she hates vigilantes and I like it when she's listening to the radio and she's the bad mouth thing, especially the border and Clark just, being allowed to listen to the radio at work. And Clark is going to go with her. She's got this old tiny car. And the car blows up. You have Deadshot here. Who Deadshot, you can see. You know Deadshot who never misses a shot. But in this, I didn't like Deadshot very much. I thought he was just okay. The actor I thought was fine. But, you know, Deadshot just sounded like a cowboy. It's like he was John Hanks' brother or something. I'm like, no. To me, Deadshot will probably like be in live action will be Will Smith. Even though the Super Smash Bros. movie sucks, Will Smith is definitely great in it, and the way Deadshot is in that movie, that does to me, Deadshot should look, you know. But anyway, Clark is able to investigate a little bit. Uh, you find out about Cat Grant's past. Uh, Cat Grant, I thought, was okay. She can somewhat, you know, and Supergirl, I think she's better, though, but here she can be a bit of a bitch, you know, and annoying as hell. I just thought she was irritating as ever. She's got man living voice, you know. She tells Clark about her son. Yeah, I think I remember Cat Grant having a son and telling Clark about it. She basically shot Cat Grant tries to escape. Deadshot nearly puts a bullet in her until Clark saves her. And then Clark knocks Deadshot out. Rick Flagg, who, after Chloe surrendered, has Clark and all of the trackers, you know, to get on the skin so they can track them. Clark decides not to go, not to go after Lois, and said, you know, give for Tom. He also finds a red and blue version of the costume, which is, of course, the Superman suit, which um, ends up, you know, Jarrell takes it, and like I showed you, picture puts the suit in there, when Clark is ready. And, of course, at the end, Flag is ready to assemble the Suicide Squad. So, well, she was just okay, in my opinion. I just wasn't a fan of Cat Grant and Deadshot. I wasn't a fan of either. Just what was going on. I like the whole thing with the seeing the Superman suit for the first time. That was cool. I just thought it was okay. Alright, another okay episode of mine is called Patriot. Oliver registers for the new registration act, being overseen by Colonel Slade Wilson. Of course, the registration ends up being a trap. They train Oliver like he's working out, like he's going to fly from Market 4 or something. <laughs> but anyway, they train him, and they kidnap, uh, they kidnap Aquaman and kidnap Mira, who you have Mira and Aquaman in here. AC, Arthur Curry. They're blowing up these civilities, civilities in Atlanta that threaten the ocean, so they're trying to protect that. And Mira, who I think is Aquaman's wife in the comics, and also, you know, Mira, his wife, and of course, you know, him being the future king of Atlantis and she, queen of Atlantis in the future. I like when Clark has to talk to Aquaman, you know, has to tell AC to stop what he's doing, and then. Before he can always ready to fight him or something, Mira's who can who has power to control water just she's flying him in the water. And well, I thought they were okay. I thought the action man was okay. Again, I'm not a big fan. I'm not a fan of the actor plays the Aquaman. He's all right, but I think I just prefer Jason Momoa would be better. That's just my opinion. You know, but they torture Oliver and they torture you know AC by putting him in the heat and not giving him the water until. You know, Mary was able to use her powers because all of us are being tortured in water, but they grab the water. She able to use her ability to control the water, grab it on Aquaman, so he uses his strength to get out of the binds. You know, so he knows everything about the heroes and he finds out about Clark's and then he weakens him with kryptonite. Weakens him with kryptonite, but Clark is able to defeat him eventually. The place blows up. Slade doesn't die, he just kind of ends up with one eye and injured basically. 
The Patriot I just thought was alright. And then they found out about... Well, Lois joins the team eventually, the Watchtower team. The team of the superheroes, which is cool. But overall, Patriot I thought was okay. And then another okay episode, in my opinion, was called... Booster. Yeah. At the beginning, though, Clark is and Lois. Clark is trying. Lois is trying to tell Clark, you know, you need to come up with that superhero identity. In my manner, and you see this kid. I guess named Skeets, not Skeet. Well, you found this superhero named Booster Girl who's who saves the kid from being run over. But Booster Girl is this type of superhero who loves attention. He's like partying. He's like kind of like Iron Man. and Well, not like Iron Man, but, you know, he's gold and stuff, pretends to be a hero, and doesn't do it to be an actual hero. does it for the fame and attention. And he says, tells her, I'm here if you take your place. You can go show me up. He's like, being a hero is not about being showing off or being popular or something like that. It's about saving and helping people and doing the right thing. You know, He's like, okay. And of course this kid who's been bullied gets this bug in him and it's bull it turns him into the blue beetle and he can't control the blue beetle. It attacks Booster. You know. The blur is able to save Catgram from being destroyed. You know, Booster does become a hero is like, You can control it, kid, you can control it and then he helps him out. And at the end Booster tells Clark Clark. You know, you can control your powers, you know, I mean Clark, the blur, you need a new name. Start with an S or something. Because the blur is pretty lame. Just give him Clark that advice. But overall, I just thought the episode was alright. You know, not really a fan of Booster. That's just me. But Boo, meh. Just not a fan of these characters, but that's just me. I mean, you know that they're going to bring us Marvel sometimes. But overall, Booster was just meh. It was alright in my opinion. Okay. Now, let's get to my... Last favorite episode of Smallville. Okay. All right, and that is the final. Yes, let's talk about the final. Hopefully, you guys can still see me. I know we're still in a bit of a long time. I'm sorry. That feels kind of here. Okay, I think that's better because it's yeah, getting a little flashy out there. You guys okay? You see me well? And the final is a two hour episode, so I'm going to get as quickly through it as much as I can, okay? Yeah, of course, the final, where Clark eventually becomes Superman. You have, it opens up seven years in the future where. Chloe is reading a comic book to a little boy, you can say her son, I guess her and Oliver's son. Yeah, her, you know, her and Oliver's, I almost heard a slap back, I'm sorry. Her and Oliver's son. Then you get back to the present, flashing back seven years. Let me go turn this, I'm sorry. There we go. Yeah, seven years earlier. Lois wants to call off the wedding, like I said, like in the prophecy episode. Lois wants to call off the wedding, but Clark says, you know, I'll marry you no matter how long it takes. She's like, you know, Clark, I'm just standing in your way. I I'm just standing in your way. You need to say, people, you can't be with me 24 7, Clark. And uh, Cl thanks to Chloe, though, Chloe is eventually, you know, her and all of her talking during the wedding about they want to get married one day probably and you know her and uh, you know she goes gives Clark's vows to her and you know these vows were very nicely done I think they were beautifully done of how they did Lois and Clark's vows to each other uh, you know I just I thought the chemistry between Lois and Clark and Aaron you know you really buy 
their love for each other, you know. And when those three she cries and decides that she'll marry Clark. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, Tess, who says Lou's measure is confirmed by granny goodness, who always said, one final chance to join Joyce's forces, but she says, no, I don't have that darkness in my heart no more. It's like, I'm so disappointed. It's like, he's coming right now, and basically you have Dark Side's planet, Apocalypse comments to take over the, pretty much to take over the world and having these followers and, and stuff. Love is important. You know, you have a nice wedding. Yeah. There's a picture of the wedding, but anyway, the wedding goes on. Lois doesn't have her dad there because the general had, a, had an emergency, so he had to go to perform his military duties. So him and Clark, I mean, <laughs> Clark and Lois, you know, even that's wedding you have. Lois there, you know, Lois and Clark getting ready. It's, it was just a sweet moment, and you have Jonathan there, which Clark can see him, of course. And, you know, throughout the episode, Clark learns in this episode to forget about his past. He tells his mom, you remember that Clark, you know, part of your past, you got to accept your past and your present and your future. It's part of who you are. He's like, and Jonathan is standing there just upset. But, you know, like Clark, you know, she's trying to tell Clark, because of Smallville, because the people, we, because of us, me and your dad, th th this is who you are, basically. And Clark is just trying to say, no, I'm moving on from the past. I'm just, I'm just letting it go. I'm just moving on to the now, you know. And Clark visits Lois at their apartment. She reads it, you know, and I, and I thought it was a touching moment, you know, between the two. And when they get married, like, says a nice wedding and stuff. You know, Mark is there, and Jonathan, you say, and Spirit is there, and they're just watching, and just, you know, finally happy that they're starting to get married. Just happy for Clark. And until, before Clark realizes that Oliver's about to put the golden ring on, the gold crystal ring on, you know, and he pushes Clark away, and he, before, you know, he can push Lois and kill Lois, Clark grabs Lois, and he's got the super spirit, like, this isn't you, Oliver. Him and Oliver pushes him a little bit, fight a little bit. He's like, come on, Oliver, fight the darkness. Fight it in your heart. It's not you. It's not in your soul. Fight it. And deep down inside, even though he might have the darkness in him, you know, Oliver just, you know, fights it off. And, you know, at the end they decide that they need to go finish these, finish the darkness off. So Clark prepares to go fight dark side. And meanwhile, you have Tess who's kidnapped by Lionel and his men. Lionel tells her, we have all the pieces of Lionel. We all have, we know. There, you basically, like I said, Michael Rosamund, guest stars in the episode, you have Lex laying on the table, just passed out. He's like, Lex, what he needs is a heart. So, my dear, what I need you to do is give you, is give him a heart. Be strong, Tess, and before they can cut Tess's heart, do that surgery on her, Tess is able to escape, shoots Lionel in the heart, Rhino goes to Clark, I mean, goes, you know, you know, the like, son, you know, and he, he tells Dark Side, I made mean, sure we do it last time. What do you want? You know, it's like, I just want my son. In exchange for what? My soul. And so he gives, it's kind of, you know, gives Dark Side his soul, Dark Side, because his body and gives Lex back, you know. Meanwhile, you know, Lex, you know, we see Michael Rosenbaum kissing him back, Michael Rosenbaum and Lex just takes the mask off and his hand is like, really bloody, really just torn up hand. I guess you can say after the fall. Yeah. After the the virtual collapse it, it tore up his hand a little bit. So Lex puts on a black glove, you know, after waking up. And Lois and Clark are at the you know for uh, for, uh at the data the planet saying that this darkness is coming and Clark ever uses kryptonite and sees the this sign of dark sign on everybody's forehead and says, oh my god, he's going to rule the earth. we got to stop him. He's like, Clark, I'll be fine. And Lois wants to give the heroes a chance to stop before they can... If they nuke the planet, it will kill most people. Kill half the planet off. Lois, I like, she tells this other boy, she has to tell this lady boy, you need to leave this. And she doesn't listen. So Lois just knocks her like, you know what, you're an annoying bitch. Someone doing stuff. She sneaks onto the plane. Therefore, someone talks to... Mrs. Secretary, he's like, you heroes have five minutes. Like, so is able to talk them into it. Uh, Oliver, by the way, goes as Green Arrow. And before the 
you know, to get back at the at this side and going golfing, grand goodness, use the studios and shoot something down. Which I, I kind of wish there was a bit more of a fight. I was disappointed by that. You know, maybe a little bit more of a fight, but it was still cool either way. You know, Clark is able to, you know, fight dark side at the bar originally. He's like, you will be light of the darkness. You know, you're getting my way. I must destroy you. And before he can throw Clark, you know, Clark has this vision of talking to Jarrell. He's like, Jarrell, you've always had the power within you, my son. And you see him using his powers like, he's like, these are my trials. You know, all everything is small, though. <sighs> Sorry, my arm. Was your trials, my son. And then Clark finally encouraged, finally, because I assume how the show, Clark can fly now and take Stark's side out, you know. But I do wish there was a bit of a fight. Like, really, that makes Dark Side look like a wimp in my opinion. Him getting taken out so easily. But anyway, Clark just tests the lance to the. I mean, Clark tra tracks is able to track her to the mansion. And in order to save Lex, well, I do like it though that, you know, the ending scene where, where part one, this final part one and part two of this episode, where at the end he talks to Jonathan and Martha John's like, I knew you could see me again, son. He's like, Clark, I love you. You're like, you're going to have to listen to Jonathan from here on out. You know, Clark, just remember, we made you who you are, people who you are. He's like, you need to go, they, you know, it's, it's just a sad moment of them hugging each other and then looking. He's like, Clark, go. And then you see Jonathan and Martha just looking at the darkness come in. And when I said Clark is able to track, like I said, Clark is able to track Tess there, but, and of course he sees Lex for the time he's like, hello Clark, Lex. I was like, he said it very bluntly, you know, with a quick descent, but harshly at the end. I can't do the dot line of dog on here. Let me see. Let's see. If I can find it. Where's Tess? What have you done with her? She's fine. I wouldn't worry so much about my dear little sister. You know, I used to think it was our families who made us who we are. Then I hoped it was our friends. But if you look at history, but if you look at history, the great men and women of the world have always been defined by their enemies. You have a second chance. You could change all that. But that's the thing about memories. You can't forget them. Like how you're always one step ahead of me, Clark. No matter how mercifully I prepared, no matter how strategy I was, only if I didn't know, I stood a chance. It wasn't a competition. Of course it wasn't. You were born to be chosen one. You're simply better than us, as Alex says. And that always killed you. No, no. What killed me is that you didn't even want it. You fought it. You hid from it. I would have taken it and relished it. Embraced it. My destiny wasn't yours to take. I get that now, which is why I finally embraced my own. You and I, Clark, we will both be great men. Because of each other, we have a destiny to, together, Clark, only on different sides. And Clark is like, I'll always be there to stop you. Always. And I'll always be there to stop you, Lex. Always. And I'll always be there to stop you, Lex. Always. And he's like, Clark, and Lex is like, Oh, I'm counting on it. Yeah. Just probably trying to read the quote you guys from here. <laughs> but, you know, is like, and then they, they, he's like, our, our destiny hasn't been written yet, Kal El. He's like, now the you know combo, you know we're not the apocalypse end of the world coming, which you have to save us from Clark. You're the only one who can. And he's like, I'm not sure Clark can't can save the world by himself. And he's like, Clark is like, look, and he and Lex is like, Clark, 
but we both know who can. He's like, and before he walks away from Lex, Clark says to Lex, Lex, I'm sorry I couldn't save you, and Lex just... And then Clark speaks away, and Lex is like, with a smirk on his face. So since this apocalypse is more coming, Clark goes to the Force of Solitude, and Jarrell is like, Clark, I'm proud of you, Kill, I'm so proud of you, and he eventually is going to give him the Superman suit, and this is where Clark becomes Superman, and this is what I thought was at the moment where both of his fathers were giving him the suit, where Jonathan is behind him, is like, always hang on to Smallville, you know, because he's telling him, Jarrell is telling Clark, you know, it's the people there, Kill, Jonathan, Mark, the people there, that made you who you are. And then you have that awesome music, and then of just him standing, you know, Jonathan Sam behind him with Superman saying, always hang on to Smallville. And then Clark walking up to his dad, walking up to Jonathan, and Jonathan just giving him the Superman suit. And Clark flies off, and he goes, saves Air Force One. He pretty much, you know, pushes Apollo, but just flies through it and saves the planet. And then, you know, it ends with the so he reading the book to his son telling him good night and he looks at the arrows saying that maybe he'll be a green arrow one day. Chloe calls Lois and you see her at the Daily Planet and Clark being clumsy and Jimmy Olsen and Perry Rock complaining about a story with Lex Luthor not getting it and you have Lex Luthor who was it's 2018 now and he's been elected president of the United States of course like his future set where he's got the white suit and the black glove you know basically becoming the madman we know. But before I get to the end, I forgot to mention, though, Lex does end up forgetting, well, it's when he says Tess. He's like, hey, you know, dear our dad saved us because Lex is sitting at the, the Luther Corp office. And he says, I love you, sis. I love you, Tess. And he hugs Tess and Lex stabs her. Says, I'm, I'm saving you from becoming me. You know I'm actually saving you from what? From turning into me. It's too late. Clark already did that. Hello, you know. Clark already did that, you know, as she tells him. That Clark already saved me. And he's like, this new toxin that she puts on his face, like, how long? He's like, you're going to forget in 30 seconds. And as Tess dies, let's just, you know, for you see all his flashbacks of Smallville, and he begins to forget Clark, Clark's secret, he, he forgets Lana. He forgets Lionel, he forgets about everyone and everything in his life in Smallville. And now he just looks outside, and then of course Luther Corp, it falls apart into a life's court, you know. But like I said at the end while I was discussing that, the Daily Planet, uh, there's trouble, there's trouble in the elevator of town, and Clark is like, Miss Lane, I have to go, and then she's like, go ahead, Clark. And then you have the Superman theme, played by John Williams, which is so freaking epic. And Smallville ends with Clark just, you know, walking on the balcony, running, just running with his shirt, and opening his suit, and see the Superman suit, and that was fucking awesome. It's just, and that's the end of Smallville. So, yeah. Well, guys, that was the end of Smallville. I know it's been a while. Been a good couple of months to talk about Smallville. I know it's really hiatus from doing it. But to get my final thoughts on Smallville Season 10, uh, the final season is this season was great in my opinion. Really good. I like how they brought Dark Side in. It was really cool. But I was disappointed how they did Dark Side. Like I said, I thought he was saying that too easily. You know, I wanted to do better showdown between him and Clark. Maybe Clark in the Superman suit. I know Tom Long did not want to wear the Superman suit from what I heard. But I'm like, really? Well, I was disappointed with mostly about the season is Clark not putting on his Superman suit. Well, he puts it on, but it's CGI. When you see him, like, flying or in the air or on sp in space in a Superman suit, it's backed away and it's just CGI. I'm like, really? I wanted to see him in a Superman suit taking on Darkseid, but we didn't get that. Or I was just disappointed by that ending. I'm like, the final was good, but I think it, it was also what they did with Lex and Lex, you know, and Clark. And seeing him become Superman, but I, mostly in, I was disappointed not seeing him as Superman. You know, 
I know you played Clark Kent for a while, Tom, but you need to understand something. People wanted to see Superman. As Superman fans, we wanted to see you as Superman. We wanted to see you with a suit on. I don't know why actors have this attitude of not wanting to wear the suit. I'm like, you need to remember, actors, you're doing this for the fans. You please the fans, yes. That's what you do. That's about, it's about entertaining, giving the fans what they want. I mean, not all the time, but still, I would love to see him in the Superman suit, you know. No, because we want to see him in that suit, you know, not CGI. We want to see him fighting this same mark, you know. But that was disappointing. But unless, this was a really good season, one of the best. I definitely put up as the best seasons up there, along with season one, uh, season two, season five, season six. Uh, season 8 and Season 9, of course. That's some of the best. Uh, my least favorite season is still Season 7. I still like it. Also, the other seasons I wouldn't put up, I would put up every Season 7, would be probably Season 3, Season 4, and Season 7. Those are my probably least favorites, but I still like them. I will say I love Smallville all the way through. I think it's a great show. Give me a final thoughts on Smallville. I think it's a great show. There are issues with the show, it's not perfect, but my rating for small season 10, I'm going to give it 4 out of 5 stars and a thumbs up. So guys, I hope you all enjoyed my journey of me talking about Smallville. Again, good cast, good story, it's a good coming day story. I like how we see Clark Kent, his early days of becoming Superman, and I really think the show did a, good, did a lot of good. You know, it had no agendas, it wasn't boring, it kept, for me it just kept on getting better and better. You know, Smallville just keeps getting better as, well, as more as you watch it. It becomes more interesting. It is focused on the story. Alex and Clark especially. For me, Clark Kent and Alex's relationship, that really will make, that makes the show, in my opinion, great. But overall, Smallville, great show. Love it. I would definitely like to get it on Blu-ray someday if I want to get rid of the DVDs of it. But Smallville, great show, in my opinion. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed me talking about Smallville. Now, next, I will be doing a TV show collection video. For next, part from my Superman marathon, we're almost done, y'all. Just want to tell you next will be Super Bowl. The TV show starring Melissa Benoit, uh, the CW Arrowverse show, will be a TV show version for Supergirl. Uh, let me go ahead and get my DVD out. Yes. Of course, I'm talking about uh, Supergirl. This will be next, so be doing a TV show collection for these, but also give them my favorite of these seasons. Of course, I'm talking about this is super cool. I'm talking about Melissa Benoit. Benoit, I can't say her name right. Season one, season two, season three, and season four. So super cool. That yes, that will be the next part of my Superman marathon. So next will be a TV show collection for Supergirl, uh, part twenty one. Which I might be doing on Friday. So, anyway, guys, four to five stars. So, let me go let me know, guys, in the comments down below. What are your favorite episodes of Smallville season 10? And, uh, what's your favorite season of Smallville? Just let me know in the comments down below. My favorite season? I probably won't say season. I don't know. I have so many. Maybe season two. Maybe that's my favorite. But, I love all of them. Let me know, guys, what are your favorite episodes of the final season of Smallville? And what you, what's your favorite scene, Smallville? And what do you think of the show? Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. See you later. Have a good day and good night. Love you, and I'll see you in my TV show collection for Supergirl. So, we're almost done with the Superman now, right now. We just have a few more videos together. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. See you all later. Stay tuned for Supergirl.